psychedelics. That word itself can trigger so many images in your mind. Swirling colors, minds expanding, maybe a lot of controversy. Grass doesn't make it for you, baby. And especially if you need to be in. Well, you can always drop a cap of acid. Now that's the real stuff. But keeping aside the legality, the morality, the right and wrong of psychedelics, how do these substances affect your brain? What happens when someone takes a substance like LSD or shrooms or ecstasy? That is what we are talking about in today's video. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior. I'm a neurologist and today we are doing a deep dive into a slightly controversial topic, which is psychedelics. Let's go. First, let's categorize the known psychedelics into three parts. Number one is classical psychedelics or hallucinogens. These are drugs that make you hallucinate things, that is, see or experience things that are not real. Examples of this are LSD or acid, psilocybin, also called magic mushrooms, and mescaline or peyote. These mainly act on the serotonin receptors in the brain and for the nerds amongst you, it is specifically the 5-HT2A receptor. Another category is dissociatives and examples of this include ketamine, which was previously a horse tranquilizer and PCP, also called angel dust. These work by blocking a specific chemical in the brain called NMDA, which is involved in glutamate signaling. So glutamate is the chemical that all the neurons in your brain use to talk to each other and NMDA helps in this conversation between neuron to neuron. And finally, the third category is empathogens. The best example of this is MDMA, also called as ecstasy or molly. These drugs increase the levels of dopamine, of serotonin and norepinephrine, which overall leads to a feeling of excitement, happiness and community bonding. People taking these drugs end up feeling empathetic and feeling a lot of love for everybody around them. Now let's break it down molecule by molecule and figure out how each of these drugs affect the brain. And we will start with the classical psychedelics, LSD, psilocybin and DMT. They all target serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter often dubbed as the feel-good chemical. Serotonin is involved in almost every part of the brain and serotonin receptors help to form neural connections. So when you see something, how your brain perceives that reality is based on how serotonin allows the neural networks to connect. Now imagine if a chemical were to change serotonin networks, that means that the chemical is changing reality itself. If you imagine your brain as a city and usually only the main highways are used, these psychedelics by opening up all the serotonin receptors will use all the small streets and back alleyways and they all light up. So your brain is capable of taking in much more information. That is why when somebody is on these substances, they are more sensitive to light, more sensitive to sound and the way they see the reality completely shifts. I've never seen such infinite beauty in my life. It's like a, a curtain or a spider web. Can you see it? It's right here in front of me, right now. Watch. No. That is why there is a big change in how you perceive the world and also why some people report a big spike in creativity. Because after all, what is creativity if not finding new ideas and new sparks and seeing the world differently? LSD stimulates creativity in the brain. In other words, it uh, expands your, your thought processes so that you can take in more. Now studies using brain imaging have shown that psychedelics quiet down the default mode network in your brain. This is a network that is responsible for the constant chatter in your brain or the self-talk. When this self-talk quiets down, people have a sense of ego dissolution, which is a losing of yourself and you feel that you are merging with the universe. And this ego dissolution part of psychedelics is probably why in history, over many, many centuries, so many psychedelics has been used in so many religious experiences. Because what better way to convince a group of people that this is where God is than by actually making them believe that they can see God. Under LSD, God's not a faraway idea. He's something that's right inside you that you're experiencing now. 
Now let's talk about dissociatives like ketamine. Like I said, they block NMDA receptors, which reduces glutamate activity. So that means that the conversation between neurons can change. This leads to a sense of detachment from reality and even from your own body. People who have taken ketamine often report that they can see themselves in third person. And interestingly, ketamine is being researched as an antidepressant because it allows people to dissociate from their mood and observe themselves in third person and that gives them a sense of calm and they're able to deal with their problems from a different perspective. And finally, you have empathogens like MDMA. These drugs are less about hallucinations and more about connection. By flooding your brain with serotonin and dopamine, these drugs give you a feeling of empathy, warmth and love towards everyone around you. Sort of because I had heard it makes you not only closer with yourself but with everybody, this sort of love peace type thing. This creates a feeling of euphoria, emotional closeness, which is why these drugs are also termed words like ecstasy. And in present day psychedelic research, these drugs are being studied for their potential use as treatment in PTSD and depression. And now let's address what is probably the most important point, which is risks. While it is undeniable that these drugs do have a potential, which means at some point in our future, these drugs can become life-saving for someone, there is no doubt that using these drugs without guidance, without knowing what they do, and mixing these drugs with other things like alcohol can severely damage your brain, even be a life-threatening situation. There have been reports of people going into psychosis, even developing things like schizophrenia after using psychedelic drugs. So on the one hand, I do believe that research should expand into psychedelics and if there is a potential to help people with these drugs, we should explore it. But on the other hand, anyone consuming this without knowledge, I would strictly warn against. So there you have it. Psychedelics isn't just about being trippy or having a good time. Psychedelics have profound impact on your brain, on your mind, on your psychological state and maybe even your spiritual state. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to see more such videos on your timeline and I will see you guys soon. Bye everyone, take care.